William, you are always like the first person in there. Good afternoon, William. So happy that you could uh, join us today. Nam as well, congratulations for being number two. Uh, excellent, I appreciate it. I'm gonna try something different. Nam, question for you. Who does this look like right here? Who does that look like? You have any guesses, Nam? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if you answer. Somebody in third grade. Hello, Pia. How are you doing? Pia, question for you as well. Who do you think does this does this girl remind you of anybody that you know? Hi, Gabriel. No, not a single person. Not a single person in third grade. Normally wears a very large bow. Has been known to blurt out on occasion. I'll let this, I'll let that uh, I'll let you think about that for a little bit. Now we're going to start in about three minutes. I'm going to try to start right at one o'clock because I know some parents are doing some work and they're uh, letting their kids on their computer. So we're going to start from one to two. There you go, Pia. Good job. There you go. Who do we have here? Is that Pranav? Is that who it is? Yes. Excellent. Uh, oh. I'm so sorry, Safik. Hello. I'm still trying to learn the parents' names. So, uh, so glad you can make it, Safik. Yes, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte was the, the person. I can't find Stuffy. Oh, the stuffed animal. Well, you do your best. What we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, talk about how to draw animals. And um, I'm going to do this on my iPad. I, I brought my uh, projector today. And um, we will uh, want to do it in a, in a with a, an iPad app, a creative iPad app that I have listed on my uh, on creative apps on my web page, uh, mrparkerart.weebly.com. So um, we'll start right at 1 o'clock. You can do it with whatever your um, whatever you have, whether it be markers or um, oil pastels or pencils. Um, I'm going to show you how to do animals. I have some pictures of my dogs. Right now, I'm going to turn the lights off here in just a minute, but uh, I have some pictures of my dogs, and then I'm going to be bro uh, broadcasting how to do this. Uh, oops. Um, broadcasting how to do it on here. And then you can do it however you want to. If you want to do paint, you want to do watercolors, uh, lots of different things. So, I will be using uh, digital media, the, an app called Sketchbook. I'll be using an app called Sketchbook. You'll see here in just a minute. Okay. Uh, well, 59. I'm glad everybody could make it here today. I'm so happy to see you. I taught my seventh grade class uh, this morning and we did a little bit of this stuff. So um, I'm going to go turn off the lights. I'll be right back. Awesome. Now, do you, maybe do you see, uh, we're going to, it's really kind of up to you to decide. I'm going to show you a few things that um, I'll actually do it two different ways. I'm going to draw both of my, I'm going to draw both of my 
my uh, dogs today, and I will go from there. Today's artist, I was thinking about it. Um, today's artist is that we're going to be talking about is Mary Cassette. Um, what she liked to do is she was really big on painting uh, children and females and uh, their relationship with each other as well, or like a mother-daughter, mother-son uh, relationship, but then also included some animals. Um, so if you wanted to include yourself, if you wanted to include your mom, um, if you wanted to include your animals, are you, you yourself holding an animal? That would be great. I'm gonna show you a couple of different paintings that are right here. You can see here, this is a nice little dog. Gabriel, I know that you, you like cats. Does anybody have any cats? Ethan, some random Ethan. We've got a couple with cat right there. Gabriel, think about that. Here's a mother, uh, if my iPad will go. Sometimes technology, oh, here it goes. Sometimes technology seems to not want to work. Come on. I hope this works. Well, let's try this again. Oh, there you go. Uh, so you have nice little boy holding a cat. You have, uh, this is my dog, Quincy, and he's a little terrier. Uh, blow him up just a little bit. He's, I took him for a walk this morning and he was stretching. And then this is my other dog, Baxter. I'm overloading the system right now, unfortunately. Um, There's Quincy. Yeah, my other dog is, there's Baxter. There, he is. there they are. Uh, Baxter is a terrier as well. I got both of these dogs. Uh, well, I got Quincy uh, about 10 years ago he, uh, from the Alamo Heights uh, dog shelter. And then Baxter, he was actually left. Uh, I, I got him in Austin. One of my friends had a had a condo that they owned and was leasing it out and somebody left uh, left Baxter, moved out, left Baxter in uh, the apartment by himself and uh, the owner put him up for adoption and we adopted them. So um, what Mary Cassatt liked to do is she liked to do a lot of different um, animal paintings. Hi Hannah, hi Jacob, uh, we do a lot of animal paintings uh, she was a, an impressionist, very similar to Monet, uh, that we looked at, uh, post-impressionist, I should say, um, that we looked at last, or yesterday. And uh, she was had a friendship with an artist by the name of Edgar Degas, who was known as uh, somebody that did uh, some paintings about dancers, some ballet dancers. You might have seen that. Uh, Degas was really big in uh, painting dancers. So, uh, but that's beside the point. Um, one of the things about Mary Cassatt that's really super important was that she was really one of the first female artists, painters that was respected. Um, their work was respected. Uh, good afternoon. And um, so I think that she's really, really, really important. Uh, she was kind of a pioneer for females in the art industry and uh, art world. and. Um, you know, we've we've done a few. Well, we did six six males, and I think it was time for us to do some females. So, uh, great. Uh, hello, Jacob, and uh, we'll we'll get started here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use an an app called Sketchbook right now. So let's see if I can pop that up. Hopefully that will pop up. I have that up. Um, let's see if it see if it goes. Um, 
Otherwise, we'll just have to go to paper, unfortunately. Let me try to resync it. Here you go. Okay, so this is an, an app. It's called uh, Sketchbook for those people that have iPads. I, I want to say that, um, hi, Leila. Um, I want to say that I asked uh, to have these I, this particular app installed on your iPads. You may or may not use it um, if you'd like to, if you want to do pencil or come back and do it. Um, this is a really great app. So what I'm going to do is on the left hand side, on the left hand side right here, these are all the tools. And what's great about Sketchbook or uh, iPad or Art iPad apps is you can um, you can change different things. There are change your your media. There's pencils, there's markers, there's paint brushes, there's calligraphy pens, there's erasers, there's spray paint spray paint cans. Do you guys have uh, the sketchbook app by chance? Have you noticed if you add it, have it? If, if anybody does have it, just let me know. That'd be cool. Uh, there's a wonderful artist by the name of David Hockney. He does a lot of really fantastic paintings, um, digital paintings, and he uses uh, an app called Brushes, but we're gonna be using what's called Sketchbook. So I, I really love it and it's really fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start. Um, if you can think about, uh, if you have made it to my first grade, first grade class, uh, William, I know that you are not, uh, you haven't made it to first grade yet, but um, in first grade, what we normally do is we do uh, a lesson on uh, how to draw animals. We draw a blue horse based on Franz Mark, and then we also draw a, a yellow bull uh, right around rodeo time. And um, these are really great in color. And so I was thinking that we could kind of start off with some of the stuff that um, use that as an example. Here, uh, Let me just pull up this picture that I just took of my dog that you were looking at. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to use black like I normally do. Uh, it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna start off with a circle right there. And what I'd like you to do is draw a circle on your paint, on your on your paper. I have my paper uh, portrait style. Um, if you wanna have it landscape style, that would be fine. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another oval right around here. Uh, we have two ovals, it almost looks like kind of a ghost. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect these. See how that goes, I'm gonna connect them. And then I'm gonna put another circle right there with the dog, dog's head. And here are his ears. And I'm gonna change the color to an orange. No, I'll change it to red so it's a little easier to see. I'm gonna do a circle right there. These, this is gonna be his back legs. And when I took a picture of him, he was stretching. So I'm gonna draw some, some circles right there. These are his hips and his front hips. And then what I have is we have his, uh, we have his knees, his left knee, and I'm gonna connect that, and his right knee, and I'm gonna connect that. And then we have his lower leg, and his lower leg, like so. I'm gonna draw his back knees right here. I'm gonna draw his ankles back here. And I'm gonna connect these and connect these. I'm gonna connect these and I'm gonna connect these. Now, these are his legs. We have his upper legs, which are right here. And we have his lower legs, which are right there. And now what we need to do is we need to do some paws. His back paws are drawn. We have his front paws that are drawn. 
And then Quincy has a really kind of curved tail that he likes to wag back and forth. So this is kind of the uh, mannequin of, um, this is kind of the mannequin of the, of the dog. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back here and I'm just going to outline and color all of that in a little bit. And Quincy is black and white, but right now, I'm coloring all of that in. We've got a nice little black dog that's right there. Come back with some gray. back over here with some black. Now you can kind of hear him barking in the background here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, once he likes to roll around in the grass, see if I can find some green here. This is somewhat green. I'll paint it. I'm not sure what kind of dog you have or a cat. Um, it doesn't really make any difference if you have a stuffed animal or if you have any kind of four-legged animal. Maybe you have an alpaca. Maybe you have a horse. Maybe you like horses. You draw it that same way. It's a circle with a circle for the, the chest part. And then you have the hips is another circle. You connect those. And then uh, you add the legs and you add, you add the legs and then you add, or you connect those legs together with the hips and then you add the knees and then you add the ankles and then you add the paws um, connecting those together. See. Jacob's going to draw a lion. We have sketchbook, but not on the school iPad at home. Um, okay, uh, Beckers, what I'm going to do is I will, I will try my best to get that installed uh, for you guys either today or, or sometime, um, sometime this week. So, um, but I was just trying to get you guys to, to think about how to draw um, I think yesterday's video was a little hard to see. So um, I have this projector at, at home uh, that we project movies on in our backyard, but um, I was thinking I could maybe use that for, um, I think. Hey, Ed, can you bring in those, can you bring me the, the paintings of Quincy and Baxter just for a second? Oh, you can't, all right. Um, all, right. Um, all right, so now I was gonna try this again and then work with uh, work with my other dog. Okay. Um, thanks. This was a painting I did of my, my dog. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe, maybe, go. ah, there you go. 
this is a this, Quince, uh, Baxter likes to look out the window. So what I did is I took a picture of him and I painted him looking out the window. This is the back of his head. Um, I'll show you guys this a little bit later. Um, so I'm going to start again. Uh, I've got a new piece, a new open digital piece of paper and uh, Baxter, he is a crazy dog. He's a little terrier and oh, there you go. Uh, this is the drawing I'm going to do right here of Baxter. Um, so I'm going to start off and change the color. I'm going to start off with white and I do a circle there. And if you remember in uh, first grade, if you were took my first grade class, this is how we did the uh, blue horse painting. And then I'm going to do another circle right here. So this one right here is his front hips. And this one right here is his back hips. And don't worry with this, I can actually erase that. But So now we're going to connect these. This is his back. And then this is his belly. So I'm going to start down here. I'm actually going to start. Go up a little bit because he has his ribs and then it kind of comes up. He's a skinny, skinny dog. So we have that. So this is his whole body. And then he has his head that's going to be right here. I'm hoping that that pops up here in just a second. It's blanking out on me. Technology, using technology is always fun. especially when you're Bluetooth in it. Um, well, this, oh, there you go. So it'll pop up. I apologize that some of that will disappear and sometimes it, it will go get bigger or smaller. I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller. So then we have his ear here, there's one ear. And then we have another ear that's down here. Currently right now, he looks like a lamb. I'm going to do his hips. I'm going to do his knees. I'm going to do his ankles. Now I'm going to connect them. Now I'm using the a very markerish type brush. And I'm going to do his paws. I'm going to do the same thing in the back. Here are his knees and connect them. I'm going to do his ankles and connect them. And then I'm going to do his paw. Uh, taking a little bit, it's taking a little bit to load. So um, this is what mine is looking like right now. Oh, there we go. It's popping up. Takes a little. Apparently, the iPad and my projector are experiencing that Dora the Explorer pause. Um, so, Baxter, he has kind of a long tail. Now, he has a nice little mouth, a kind of a snoutish type thing. I'm going to draw that. And then, what I'm going to do is, Baxter is a white dog. So what I'm first going to do is this. I'm going to color the background. I'm going to color that in my painting. I have him as a, a pink as a pink background. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to paint that pink. You can paint however you want to, or draw however you want to, whatever color background you want. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm just, he's going to be white here and I want him to stand out. Now, if I were using oil pastels, which I originally planned on doing, you could do the same thing. Some of these lessons that I'm going to do, I'm going to change up midways just because of 
uh, I want to, and sometimes uh, the oil pastels don't want to work all that well, or the mid part supplies. We're going to beautiful oops, right? His, his ears are not that long. So now we have some people that, uh, let's see. So Jacob said that he was going to do a lion. Um, if you wanted to do a lion, if you wanted to do a horse, if you wanted to do whatever you wanted to do, that would be fine. Um, but four legged creatures, whether it's a cat or a dog or, or even a chicken, uh, of course you wouldn't have four legs on a chicken, but, um, it's that same premise. Start off with circles. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that color. I'm going to do a nice base coat for it to get to get everything all clean. Now he said, Mr. Parker, you said that he was a white dog. Why are you painting him brown? Well, I'm going to paint, he has some, some brown skin underneath his white hair. And so I'm just covering over those circles with this brown. And then now I'm going to just go back to some white. And he has some very, very thin white scraggly hair. So I'm just going to use some thin lines. If I were to do a self portrait of that, or if I were to do a pet portrait of Baxter, good thing to do would be use like a scratch, one of those scratch boards. You guys remember using some of those scratch boards? Those are fun. And you can kind of see how he's going a little bit. I'm layering those lines. These are called hatched lines. When I say hatched, hatched are lines that look like matches that are kind of going on top of one another. And then if you go with an X, it's called a cross hatch line. Uh, Pia is making a rainbow dog. Interesting. I can't wait to see it, Pia. Oh, speaking of shout outs, um, I wanted to say thank you, Nermal, Talia, Caroline Rickles, uh, Gabriel, with two pieces of artwork, Madison and Mason, um, and then Devorah. No. William, I didn't find your artwork. Uh, I don't know if you uploaded some yesterday, but um, you said you did. So that I'll have to just double check um, and see. You have to see it. Did you do it on Seesaw? You know, if you could tell me or email me a picture, I'll make sure it gets onto your portfolio. Now I'm just going on. Now, if you have some white paint, you could paint on top of this. Uh, Pia said that she's doing a rainbow dog. Um, I know a lot of people like cats. I'm not much of a cat person, but um, people like what they like. So just keep going. And I'm just painting over this. Over. And when I say I'm painting over it, what I mean is I'm drawing these lines on the sketchbook. I'm not actually painting my iPad. And I would keep going on and on and on and on. And what I've done is I've added a little bit of curl, curl to his fur because he has it's kind of crazy especially um, I took him yesterday for a walk and we got rained on and it was very very wet and he 
it got a little curly. It gets to that point. Nolan, do you have a dog? Nathan, do you have a dog or a pet or a cat? My dog has the biggest bow ever. Ah. I can't wait to see that big bow. Is it, I guess it's a girl bow. Is it a girl bow, Pia? So now what I'm going to just do is I'm just going to try to outline, get rid of that black a little bit on the corners. give a little bit what's called definition. Now I'm going to change color and go back to black. Now, if you don't have a dog or if you don't have a cat, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, Layla, you could do a stuffed animal. You know, you can do, uh, you know, we have uh, the holiday, you know, Good Friday coming up um, soon. And we uh, also have uh, Easter coming up as well. So uh, we'll be doing some bunny stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys have bunnies or not, but um You know, we will be doing some bunnies. I was thinking tomorrow maybe um, there's a fourth grader uh, by Ner her name's Nermal, and she has some some chickens. She had one chicken by the name Painted Nails a few years ago. Um, that would be great. I'll show you here in just a minute my actual painting that I did. Now this is a side view of uh, of a dog, and what I did with Quincy was more of an aerial view of a dog. An aerial view is when you look at something from up above and look down on it. That's called an aerial view. But this is a side view. We're looking at it from the side, like if maybe you are a short guy, short girl, um, or maybe you're on your knees with your your dog. Um, who died? No dog for the Beckers. We are drawing a monster. Ooh, a monster. Um, uh, you know, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm sorry about that. Oh, uh, so I was show you. Uh, I'll show you a picture of, of a painting of that I did of Baxter, this white dog. And, um, oh, hi, hello. We're doing uh, four-legged animals uh, in a kind of a Mary Cassatt sort of way, um, different lines. I showed them how to do um, using circles and ovals and then connecting those circles and ovals to draw a four-legged dog. This is my dog. This is supposed to be my dog, Baxter. And we did Quincy earlier. Um, I'm going to I have some paintings that... Uh, I've done of, of both dogs and um, I'm using this app that's called Sketchbook. It's for the iPad. It's really a, a really cool app. Um, 
and you can do all sorts of media for all those people that are maybe at home and don't have any art supplies. You can use that. How'd your um, how'd your wildflower paintings go? Turn out? Did they turn out okay? Um, your landscapes from yesterday. And there was one. Uh, there was a girl that turned it in yesterday. Normal. Uh, she did a great job on hers. She even put like a little house on it. It was really really cool. Um, did you finish it or did you stop? And it's okay if you stop. Uh, working on yourself. Oh, Baxter flipped around there. I don't know what just happened. Kind of twisted. Now I'm using uh, this um, stylus. This is what it's called. It's basically like an eraser that has a, a tiny, tiny bit of magnet to it, um, similar to a magnet. And it helps, uh, if you have a stylus, it helps drawing. But again, on my webpage, there's a lot of creative apps that are on there. Uh, there's, if you are um, in kindergarten or first grade, the top line is we have some beginner creative apps like Hello Crayons that that mimics the look of crayons. It's really kind of cool. And then we have um, like Drawing Carl. That's another one. There's a really neat one called The Art of Glow that paints. It's kind of like a game. Um, like Light Bright uh, is a, was a game that I had grew up on where you uh, put lights in, in a Minecraft pet grid and um, then it glows and glows at night it's, or it glows on the screen. It's really kind of cool. Um, I like those. Sketchbook is, a, is a, a free app, a drawing app. That's the one I'm using right now. Uh, it's produced by Autodesk. Um, I really like that. And I think it has a good look to it. Um, and then um, it gives it gives you the option of gives you the option of uh, changing the sizes of your brush, your pencil. Um, that's how I did this really sort of small close up. I'm going to close up, give you a close up look of the lines, those hatch lines that are right there, um, and then. You can change it to a thicker line, like those big bold brushes. You can have whatever color that you want to as well. Oops. Um, and then what's really great about it is um, there is an undo button. And it's um, you can undo the last action. So if you make a, make a mistake, you can, there's an eraser, and then there's also the undo, which is fantastic. Um, Especially when you're you're creating art. Now I you know I stress the beautiful oops, and we do that. Um, do do you have a light bright? Oh you love oh that's great. Um, uh, so what I was thinking about doing is uh, maybe on Fridays from now on, or uh, Fridays we'll have iPad art uh, lessons from now on, um, but. What I wanted to do is I wanted to do some uh, some paintings, some drawings where you're actually getting away from your your screen. Um, I feel like you're probably spending a lot of time in front of the computer or from your iPad or or whatever. And and I really want you to I want you to create art uh, in the traditional way, and then we can do it in the digital way on Fridays. It'd be a nice little um, kind of break things up. But again, not everybody has art supplies, and so I want to make sure that you are um, 
you are doing a everybody's doing art and so if you just have a pencil um you can't do some coloring um you're in for the ipad art lessons um okay great uh dara uh what what grade is is uh is ellie in um also another thing another app that i was going to tr try to do is try to install is iMotion uh, where it's a stop motion piece uh and then where you can make like a movie uh like lego like a lego movie or you can make a stop um, uh, wallace and gromit is another one that chicken run um she's in third grade oh, okay great so that'd be a nice nice time um so what I was thinking about doing is maybe having like a like a film festival or an art contest as well, or or both, and then uh, somebody could win some prizes. Uh, we can do a vote on on Kahoot and uh, I could do a poll, and everybody could vote. Um, so we can have it. I don't know about permanent collection there this year. I'm hoping that we'll have that option, but. Um, we can have a uh, afternoon art class uh, competition with you guys if you wanted to. And then, uh, do you have you have the iMotion app on your school iPad already? Uh, that's great. Um, then we can do that. I'm going to show you guys. I'll show you guys some some tips and tricks on how to use some ideas on how to do the the iPad. Uh, use the iPad in stop motion. Um, well, I can tell you right now. We've got some time. Um, so there is a website, uh, called mypaperheroes.blogspot.com. Um, it's on my, it's on my website. Uh, there's a link to it, uh, under the creative apps. And so if you are interested, maybe you're interested in, uh, the Avengers or Batman or, uh, Harry Potter or wherever, um, there are templates. Uh, let me bring that up here. Mypaperheroes.blogspot.com. So, uh, it's probably up. Oh, there you go. It's right here. So you can have like the Incredible Hulk, and they got Cyclops. They got Captain America. Uh, they have. Uh, uh, Thor, Wolverine. Um, so you can print those out. Um, they give you the templates that are really, really neat. Um, I also have this app that's called uh, Foldify and uh, Foldify Zoo. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll download those PDFs and then you can print them out if you have a printer and you can uh, create those. Uh, you can fold them and make your own sort of zoo if you wanted to. Um, so we just learned how to do four-legged animals um, or we had a refresher course on how to make animals. And um, if you wanted to, you could do some monkeys. Jacob, you know, you have this, uh, you like monkeys. Uh, there's elephants and rhinos and other things, lions uh, that are really pretty awesome. And so I'll, what I'll do is I'll save those and then I'll upload them to, I'll build a web page and have those PDFs for you guys that you can print out and then cut out if you have some scissors and then um, you can use those to make movies if you wanted to. Uh, really good, good scene. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd give it, give the projector a try today uh, with the iPad apps. Um, I'm teaching my seventh grade class some stuff that um, will be digital media and we're going to do animation. And, and... Oh, cool. Um, and then we'll go uh, we'll do some stop motion as well and, and other things. Uh, very, very neat. Uh, for those of you that are at home and have iPad at home, let me, sh let me show you um, this one app um, that I really like. Uh, so for those people that are like, so this was, this is my dog Quincy. Um, he's a big grump. Uh, he's, he's, he's a great dog though. Um, and then this is, this is Baxter. 
uh, we say that he has special needs. Hey, Matt, what's up, man? How are you doing? Uh, he has glaucoma. He had a stroke uh, earlier this year and, um, and has now uh, some eye problems. So his eyes a little red, and, uh, but he's a sweet dog as well. So uh, we had our air conditioner go out this last week. We had some people that were coming in and out today fixing our air conditioning and uh, the dogs were really super, super cool. But anyway, so uh, if you wanted to include, or if you wanted to draw a picture of yourself, uh, like the Mary Tassat piece here, there's cats and dogs. Uh, I've had a webpage, uh, this right here. Again, I feel looks like Charlotte. Can you see it now that I say Charlotte, ma'am? Um, She's just wearing a hat. I mean, I'm wearing a hat. I don't always wear a hat, but imagine her with a bow. Um, and we got some some kids that are right there. And then again, Mary Cassatt, uh, impressionist, uh, friend with Edgar Degas, uh, just a pioneer for women in the art industry in the late 19th, early 20th century. Um, did some outstanding stuff. I want to say. Uh, Karen, I want to say that uh, Elsie had some, uh, my aunt Elsie had some uh, Mary Cassatt pieces in her living room when I was growing up back in the day. So uh, I'm not 100% sure if there was Cassatt, but uh, beautiful stuff. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn the lights on here in a second. turn the projector off. So uh, I showed you this in a really bad, bad lighting way. This is the painting of Baxter and Baxter, what he liked to do, um, he liked to, um, what he liked to do is he liked to look out the window. And um, so one day I took a picture of the back of his head and then painted it. And I gave this to my, my daughter. Um, I have another painting of of Quincy, um, but it's in her room and she's in the middle of class and I can't, apparently I can't go in the room during class. Um, I haven't forbid. So, um, and then we, we had another dog. Uh, his name was Kobe. Um, uh, Kobe is a great little dog. He, um, uh, he died a few years ago, about three years ago. And so, um, I ended up painting this dog for my wife, uh, as a, it's hanging in our, our living room, um, or not, our, it's hanging in our bedroom. And whichever she goes, she, uh, she gets to see Kobe. And so what I was going to do, uh, today is when I'm done with you guys, I was going to sit down and draw a picture or draw or paint a picture of Quincy as well as Baxter, um, uh, alcohol markers. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, um, let me, Matt Grunler, do you know anything about uh, alcohol markers? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I use uh, Prismacolor markers are really, really outstanding markers. I like those. Um, there's also repediographs. Um, I have some markers that, that I use for my professional stuff um, that I'll, I'll look about. Dick Blick is a really great uh, art supply place. That's where I get all my art supplies or Jerry's Art Rama. Um, I would look one of those two places. I know that um, Jerry's Art Rama, Dara is in Austin, in San Antonio, but I'm not sure about Houston. Uh, Michaels will probably have something. And I know that they have curbside pickup for all their stuff. Um, so, oh, you know what I was gonna do is I was gonna talk, talk to you guys about animation. So I don't know if you have. Um, I don't know if we got 15 more minutes. Um, I don't know if you guys, uh, have I, your own iPads at home. I know that a lot of people have, um, the school iPads and, and they're great and I get it, but, um, there's only so many school apps that you can get. Um, so on my webpage, um, I have this thing that's called animation in art. Uh, it's a presentation that I gave for the National Art Education Association uh, piece. And um, so what my, well, 
what my seventh graders did is they did some work on uh, lighting is reflecting. Did some work on some Henri Matisse uh, pieces that were really super cool. Um, there's a uh, it's a lot like this right here. Um, Henri Matisse, he was uh, an artist that uh, came down with, uh, or that started doing some uh, paper construction. He, he liked to do this thing called drawing with scissors. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, Jacob. Um, yeah, losing your dog is tough. Um, anyway, if you were in my class in first grade, we did this unit called drawing with scissors. And you really there's a lot of people that struggled with that because they wanted to get some pencil and, and draw the, like a mermaid type scene. And we did some symmetrical pieces. So like two hands that would be here and then they would flip uh, like so. And then we would cut them out and then do a nice collage. Does anybody remember that? I hope it is. It was really kind of cool. Uh, a lot of really fantastic collage pieces with that. But um, Henri Matisse, he did these things that were called blue news and um, they were just like these uh, these mannequins, but they, they were blue, and I just dropped the base. Um, and they put them in all these sort of positions, and they're very organic shapes, and it's supposed to give off the impression of a human figure. As you can see here, the arm is kind of like kind of like this, and then the leg or the other arm is down, and one knee is up, and the other is the other leg is kind of wrapped around the other one. Um, we did that in first grade, Pia. Um, if you look through your portfolio, I'll, I'll probably do that in just a minute. I'll show you some stuff. But um, I think we started in first grade in your, what was the collage? Uh, I'll, f I'll find it in just a minute. But anyway, um, so we did these animations with uh, paper construction uh, as the, the blue nude paper construction as the inspiration. And so I gave this presentation here and you can get to see a little bit. Uh, so I really liked how these, it's like a manic, it's a mannequin dancing and it's based on this, this blue nude piece. So, um, the app itself, I think costs, uh, around $4.99. Um, I, 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 I've tried to get that up on the iPads, but, uh, it's, it's a bit of a cost for the entire lower school. So if you have your own iPad and you want to do some animation, it's super, super awesome. Um, let me show you what some other kids did. Here it is. Uh, here. Laying down and then going. Um, this was a really neat one. Um, this this kid went to Australia and they had the kind of art that they have in class. Is, art art that they have there is called Aboriginal art. It's kind of like Native American art there, but um, there's a specific look. There's Quincy that's barking. Let me. So this is a, a pretty regular looking view here uh, of an Aboriginal person that would be playing a didgeridoo. Um, I don't know if any of you have been to Australia before. It's a really great place to visit. Um, Quincy. And so this, uh, this kid decided that he was going to do um, a snake charmer blowing the didgeridoo. I should have probably broadcast this on my, on my projector. I'm sorry. I like the smile there at the end. I thought that was really neat. And then, um, so I did this, uh, 
I did this presentation uh, on Saturday on, on animation and art and um, using this particular software and the, the software, um, the software developer and owner of the company, she tuned in and um, she was just blown away by this next animation, which I think is just so, so awesome. So um, let me show you. Let me see if I can. Oh, come on. You know what? Let me let me let me put it back on the projector. One Quincy, stop. So give me one second. Um, let me turn this back on. So how are you guys coming along on your uh, on your animal paintings, drawings? Are you are you finished? Um, how did it turn out? Did it turn out well? Turn out nice, ma'am. Did you upload your stuff? I didn't see your stuff, man. Um, to Art Sonia, I, I I don't know where you're doing it. If if you if you're having problems, just email it to me or put it on Seesaw and then. Uh, and send it. I'll make sure that it gets on your portfolio. So, um, but anyway, so the, if you have an iPad at home, that's your own personal one. Um, you just, you can get that do ink animation one. Uh, there's a lot of you, a lot of you guys that I feel like would do a really great job. Should pop up here and just, there you go. So if, there's a fourth grader in, uh, there's a fourth grader that goes to Keystone and her sister, a fourth grader by the name of Caroline and her sister, Kate, um, did this one. It was really, really good. Um, so um, I showed this at my presentation and the owner was just blown away by it. So uh, she loves horses. They ride horses a bunch, and um, I was just truly amazed by by this. Uh, Kate did just an awesome job, and I have this on the web page, but YouTube's blocked for you guys, so um, this is the only way that I can show it to you. And then, what was really super cool about this is, like, this is a a portrait of hers, self-portrait that she included in the animation. I thought it was just, just amazing. Um, truly one of the best things I think one of my students had done. And um, her mom uh, emailed me and said that she had a whole bunch of homework for my class. She wanted to know what was going on with um, all this homework I was assigning. I said, I wasn't assigning anything. I would, I mean, I just, I signed like a 10 second video and that 10 second video ended up turning into like a minute and a half. Um, I truly appreciate all her hard work and all this, uh, all the wonderful stuff that you do. I mean, that's like the sign of engagement. But as you see here, this is another animation that was done of skateboarding. My, my daughter just bought a skateboard in California, so I would say that this is her. Um, and then if you wanted to do any of the, like your own studio art and then put some animations to it, there's this, these penguins. We've done this before in first grade. Uh, Want to put some turtles and other things on here as well. I was really just gonna, I was really just going to do the animation this nine weeks. So it's it's kind of I've done it in, in years past, and I feel bad that I didn't get an opportunity to do it with you guys this year. So, um, this was some something that was done uh, last year, no, two years ago. Um, we had uh, a student that, that were studying idioms, uh, like it's raining cats and dogs. Here. So uh, they took this painting that was a rainy day in Paris and then uh, animated the rain as well as put the dogs and cats on there. So uh, I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, well, more than cool. I thought it was really, really neat. So if you have your own iPad, uh, the app itself is, is Doink Animation, D-O-I-N-K, um, and it has a pink um, pink octopus on there. So if you're looking for something to do other than um, 
video games, you can always work on your animations. And you can turn those in for, we'll have an art contest or art video uh, contest or stop motion, and you can include those in there as well. So um, anyway, with that, it is about 1.55. Um, this is going to be, uh, I, I create, I apologize, I, I, I've meant to do some, do the projects. Some people said they can't find the projects. I've been, I've put all the projects titles now, project folders now in Artsonia. So um, this one today is called Mary Cassatt. Uh, it's 07 Mary Cassatt uh, uh, Family Pet, I think is what it's called. And um, again, the, the Artsonia code is YXHN. KRPP, if you wanted it to upload it to your Artsonia account, if you can't find it or whatever, just you can uh, take a photograph of your artwork and then put it on Seesaw. And then also, or you can always email me like uh, Caroline that I mentioned earlier, she, her mom emailed her doing some work. Uh, as far as my expe expectations for you guys, I'm doing uh, artwork or these art shows, afternoon art shows uh, every day, but, Monday through Friday. And if you want to do every day, that's cool. If you wanted to do it once a day, because you know, at school, we only have art once a week. I mean, if you want to do once a week, that's fine too. Um, you do what you can and you do what you want to, um, you know, some people have brothers and sisters, like younger is that younger baby kid, uh, baby brothers and sisters that are crying all the time. Or maybe you can't get on the computer or, um, Maybe you have Wi-Fi issues. Um, that's all expected. Uh, it's all understandable. So you guys do whatever you you do whatever you can do. Uh, I'll be here uh, one o'clock to two o'clock Monday through Friday, and um, you know the more the merrier. But I, I completely understand. So and you know you might not have a dog, as Jacob said that you know he cries every single time that he sees a photo of his dog. I don't want it to be painful, but you know sometimes art is a really good. Um, outlet to deal with emotion and frustration and, and loss. Um, I know that I mean, case in point with me and, and Kobe here, um, you know, it was, a, it was a, it was a way that I dealt with it. So, um, and here we're going through some stuff going on with the United States and, or the world for that matter with this, this virus. And it's, it's a good way of dealing with frustration and emotion. And, um, so anyway, on that note, I'm going to take off. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock.